Hey everyone, it's Keila here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. On the weekend, we seem to have sold lots of our Aquafresh room and linen spray, so I'm having to top them up today. And I'm also gonna get, add a couple of new fragrances into the range, and I thought I'd take you along and show you how I make them. Let's go. So whenever I do my room sprays, I do pretty much treat them like a bath and body product. So I make sure I've got my gloves on, I've got my hair net on, and I pretty much sanitize everything that I'm going to use. The reason being, even though these are made and are intended to be a room spray, I do know that many people, myself included, will actually occasionally spray these sprays on the body as a body perfume. So I pretty much treat them as the, a body product to make sure that they are nice and safe to use. So the first thing I am going to add into my bowl here is my fragrance oil. I have had lots of requests to do coconut lime, so that's what I'm doing today, and as well as a few others. Now, when you are selecting your fragrance oil to go into your room spray, there are a couple of things that you need to consider. As you would with any other bath and body product that you make, you need to make sure that that particular fragrance oil is safe to use in a room spray and that you are not exceeding the guidelines. And something else along those lines of people using this as a body spray is to make sure that that fragrance oil is a body safe and if not putting the appropriate labels onto your or the appropriate warnings onto your labels and also make sure that if it is body safe that you're not exceeding the amount of um, what is safe for body sprays if that limit is higher than a room spray. I hope that makes sense. So basically you want to make sure that this is safe for both room and body use. So I've got my oils in there, or my fragrance oil. The next thing I'm going to add in is polysorbate 20 and this is a solubizer. And what you need this for is to make sure that your oils and, and the water that we add are going to mix together because oil and water do not mix. So if you don't put this in, every time the person goes to use the room spray, they will need to shake it and shake it quite vigorously to make sure that the oil and water has mixed together. By using the polysorbate in there, you can be sure that your oil and your water is going to mix together and that your customer does not have to shake the product every time they use it. Right, so I'm going to use my little frother here just to mix this up, just to make sure that that polysorbate and the fragrance oils are well combined. And I've used the polysorbate 20 because this is just fragrance oil that's getting blended in with water. So we don't need that stronger hold of polysorbate 80, which is what people use mainly for things like bath bombs or bath oils, where you've got things like heavier oils like avocado oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, avocado oil, the list goes on. You need that heavier polysorbate to combine heavier oils into water. For something as light as a fragrance oil or an essential oil, um, you just need that polysorbate 20. That is perfectly fine to help you emulsify your oil and water together. Now that I've got them mixed, I am going to put in some preservative and I use Nipigard SCE. Now I've always seen a lot of debate in groups about the use of a preservative in a room spray. This is water-based and it will grow bacteria if you are not careful so for me a preservative is absolutely essential in a water-based product because if this grows bacteria and you don't see it and you go spraying that about the room you are going to breathe in that bacteria and as a fine particle that can be really really dangerous for your lungs so my take on it is that if it's a water-based room spray you should have a preservative in there and I prefer to use my broad spectrum preservative. I know some people will use alcohol, but I know that this preservative works well, and that's why I choose to use that one. So now that I've got all that blended together in there, I am going to add my water. Okay, so I am using distilled water for in here, and I'm just going to pour it straight in until I get to the weight that I need. Mm -hmm. 
Now that all my water's in there, I'm just going to give that a stir with my spatula. You could use it, the little frother, but I find using the frother now puts way too many bubbles on the top of here and it really messes around with how I then fill the bottles. You end up with lots of bubbles in the bottle and not enough of the liquid. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a stir. And then I've got my rubbing alcohol. Just give that a quick spray and that will burst all of those bubbles there. I don't like to have too many bubbles because I don't want too much alcohol being sprayed in here. Now it's time to pour these into the bottles. Alright, so I'm using these white 250ml bottles to fill up for my room sprays. And whenever I do my room sprays, I like to work in grams. I just find it much more accurate than working in mils. Um, just sometimes if you're looking at it slightly different, you may see your fill level at a slightly different place so you may be under or over 250 mil and when the little man comes along with his checkboard to make sure that everything is labeled correctly it doesn't matter if you've misread where that sort of level is you will get fined if you have not got that minimum amount or an average over all your products um, in your bottles so I prefer to work in grams what I do when I first work out how many grams I need to fill I basically measure out um, I'll take about six to ten of my portions and I weigh out 250 mil every time or what looks like 250 mil every time and then I weigh that 250 mil and I take an average and I worked out on average for me I think I was ending up pouring about 255 mil and it was about 240 grams each time so that is what I fill all of my bottles with now I know one of the things that a lot of people ask about room sprays is how do I make a clear room spray I hate that it's milky in color and things like that I have tried everything and I honestly I just I'm not convinced that it is possible if you are making them correctly I've read things where it says that if you've got your um, polysorbate warmed up and your fragrance oil warmed up and then you blend everything else together that will help make it clear I've tried that it didn't work I've seen other people make these and they go and you stir and stir and stir and poof it goes clear I've done that. I have blended with a stick blender and I still can't get it to go clear. And the more I sat there and made lotions and moisturizers, the more it suddenly dawned on me that it's the same process. You are mixing oil and water together with a solubizer, whether that solubizer be an emulsifying wax or something like your polysorbate in your, um, in your water-based product like this, it goes white so my sort of thing is if it's gone white to me that means that the oils and the um, the oils and the water have actually emulsified together and your customer should never have to shake that bottle to get it to combine so they should just be able to pick the bottle up and spray it make their room smell pretty and off they go so just down to this very last bit, not too bothered about how much that weighs because that is going into the final bottle to be the tester to go on the shelf. So I'll just get these ones all done up and then I'll come back and actually discuss a little bit about the recipe when we make the next one. Right, so my bowl is all cleaned out, everything's nice and clean and we are ready to go with the next fragrance and I am going to be doing Prosecco Rose. So I can't really give you a recipe as such because things are going to vary depending upon your fragrance oil. So it really depends upon how much you are allowed to use of your fragrance oil as to how much water, polysorbate and all the rest of it is. When I choose my fragrance oils for making the room sprays, I try and make sure that they all have the same usage rate because it just makes it easier to make them in batch rather than having one oil that you can only use this amount and one oil that you can only use that amount they all use exactly the same amount so you've got to double check your your fragrance oils some will say one percent some will say two some will say maximum five 
So let's, for example, say that your fragrance oil lets you use 1% in your room spray. Polysorbate 20, I use as a one for one, and I've always had a nice stable emulsion when I do it as a one for one. So that means I'm gonna use 1% of my polysorbate 80 as well. But if your oil allows you to use 5%, then use 5% of your polysorbate 80. So I've got my polysorbate 80 in there. I'm going to give that a quick mix up just to make sure that it is all nice and incorporated. And then adding your preservative. So you actually need to check what your preservative says is, a, is required because some you need a little more than others. I'm with my nipper guard, I can go anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5. I'm actually going at 1% because I want to make sure that this is well preserved because if anything does decide that it's going to grow into a product, the last thing you want it in is something that is a fine mist that could cause breathing difficulties. As someone who suffers from asthma, I know how frightening it is not to be able to breathe because you've got some sort of chest infection or virus or something else. So I'm using that 1% to make sure that this is nicely preserved. And then the amount of water that you add in is whatever the percentage is that is left after adding your other three ingredients. So for simplicity's sake, let's say that we added 1% fragrance oil, 1% polysorbate and your 1% of your preservative, that's 3% in total. So that means 97% of your room spray is going to be water. If for example your fragrance oil allows you to use say 4% so you want 4% fragrance 4% polysorbate that's 8% plus your um, preservative at 1% that's 9% that means that 91% of your room spray will be water so I hope you guys can make sense of that so pretty much your recipe is determined by how much fragrance oil you are allowed to use or essential oil. fragrances to make but it's pretty much the same process for each and every one of them so I'm not going to take you through all of them but I will show you how I finish these off. I like to use these trigger sprays on my room spray bottles because they give a really nice mist when you spray them. They always come with a little straw piece that is much longer than the bottle because they're pretty much generic and should fit any of the bottles that your supplier sells but how do you work out how much you need? You can't just put the whole thing in there. It's all to do with gravity. If you put that whole piece in and your bottle's really short, it's actually not going to pull that liquid up and through the stem very well. So the best thing to do is to cut them down to the height you need. What I do is I work out where the bottom of my sprayer is, because when you spray that on, it's gonna sit down on the neck of your bottle. I hold that level with the bottom of the neck of the bottle there. And then I take my scissors, and hopefully I can do this without getting too much in the way. I take my scissors, work out where the bottom of the straw is on the bottle. I add just a couple of mil, and I snip it off. And then that should screw on nicely. And it will sit just on the bottom so it can um, pick up any of that leftover liquid at the end of the spray. Now instead of having to do that on every single one of these um, bottles. I keep that piece that I've just chopped off. Next time round I will grab three of them. I make sure that they are all level at the bottom including that piece I've just cut off there. So I've got my short one and then I've got all the others that are all nice and level at the bottom there. I then take my scissors and I chop them all off. And there it is. I've got three of them done in one go there. You can do more. It just depends on how much um, your scissors or how well your scissors will go through them. You don't want to do so many that your scissors just um, destroy the bottoms of them because if you squash the bottom of the little tube then they also won't pull any of the liquid up. So 
I just like to keep to about three or four at the time with my scissors. So we'll do that one, grab that off cut piece again, trim all three of them. And I always keep the very first one that I did, just in case any of the others do end up with one or two mil short or longer, I know that um, I'm not going to get too short or too long as I go through all of my bottles. So we'll get the tops on here and then we'll pop some labels on. Alright, so we're going to get some labels put onto these room sprays. Now I always sit my fragrance bottles in front of my products when I'm doing bulk like this so I know which are which fragrances without having to take them off and have a smell. Now I get lots of questions about my labels, where I get them printed and everything else. I actually do all of my labels myself. I buy in blank labels. These ones I'm using I actually get from off eBay and they're a polymer label rather than a paper label and I find that if these get a little bit dirty they're so easy to clean off they apply to products really well and they're nice and waterproof as well some of the paper labels even when you use the gloss labels things just tend to wash off on them especially if it's a bath and body product so basically with my room sprays I've made up all of my labels in a program called Corel Draw I do a template up and then I copy it the number of times onto my A4 sheet and then I go and cut them up on my guillotine ready to go on here. So I've got my coconut lime ones all ready to go. That is my tester bottle and I have a completely different label to go on there. And I'm going to start popping these on. Now when I do these, this is a little bit of a funny label, this polymer paper sort of thing. It's really thin, it's really bendy but and you just have to be patient with it, otherwise you do get air bubbles, but it really is worth the effort of putting them on. To get them on, I basically, I like lay my bottle down in front of me straight, I lay my label across it straight, and then I pull it down firmly and start wrapping it around. And that is how I get my labels onto my bottles nice and straight. Then I just go around making sure that all the edges are nicely stuck down. I have got an air bubble on this one. The good thing with these polymer labels is that they actually do peel off unlike your paper labels where you peel them and then they rip. These ones will peel back so I can then push it back down and get rid of that air bubble. And they will, it's a bit like contact paper, if you just move it around a little bit, if you have got little air bubbles in there, they will eventually move to the edge of the label and come out. That one's almost there. And there we have it, that is our room spray. Alright, so all of the room sprays are now done, I just need to photograph them ready for the website and also then pack them into the trailer ready for the weekend's markets. Now while I was finishing them up, a couple of things did come to mind which I'm going to preempt a couple of questions I may be asked. So the first one is about preservative. I choose to use the Nipper Guard range mainly because it is a preservative which is easily accessible for me that I trust and I work well with and because I'm allergic to the other commonly found um, preservative which is liquid germal. Now as long as you are using a water-based preservative, you can use any preservative that you want to in the room spray. Now the other question I'm going to preempt being asked is about whether or not you can colour these room sprays. My personal feeling on it is I would not colour the room sprays. But I know so many people are going to disagree with that and are going to really want to colour them because they can't stand that milky white look and they want to put them in clear bottles. If that is yourself, you do need to make sure you're using a water soluble dye. I'd probably steer clear of the lakes dyes because they are just so potent. And you also need to make sure that that colour is safe for an atomised product. That is anything that is sprayed into the air. Now, the reason I choose not to spray or not to put colour in my sprays. I have warnings on all of my spray bottles saying to do test patches if you are spraying them on linen, but so many people don't follow that and they get their room spray, get it home and they just go nuts and spray everything. So they spray the bathroom, they spray in the lounge, they then start spraying all the bed linen, the sofa, the cushions, the curtains, the list goes on. And they're so in love with the spray that they spray it on themselves before going out. Now if you've got colour in that water spray and they are spraying it on any pale coloured fabrics or white walls and things like that, 
there is a very real risk that that color, especially if you've used something like a potent lakes dye or heavily colored your room spray to get a bright look, there is a real risk that that color is going to transfer onto the material and stain it. And those customers are gonna come right back to you and demand that you do something about it. So that is why I choose not to add color into my room sprays. But of course, if you want to take that risk, you are more than welcome to do so. Okay, so that is basically all there is to making the room and linen sprays. I hope you have enjoyed watching me make mine. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you do have any questions, I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the weekend's video, I hope you have a great one. I'll see you then. Bye. <music>